Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good it's evening. good to see you. It's good to see you good too. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. We are going to wait uh, for a moment for the others because we are going to begin uh, with a question today. So uh, we are going to uh, wait the others to um, join the meeting and also to uh, join the activity because we are going to end with the, um, with the conversation that we were uh, listening yesterday. And we have a question for today. So I think we are going to wait for a minute to begin with this session. That is the last of this week. Okay, remember that yesterday we were talking about um, different things, but the last part of the meeting was about a conversation um, that we have on the platform. And in that conversation, we uh, could see uh, a people that is talking about the things that they did during the weekend. So that's why we're going to start with that part. We are going to start with a question. Remember that I was telling you that uh, we are going to have that uh, short discussion today in which we are going to uh, give details about the things that we did on the weekend. And if we are a person that likes to go outside to go shopping, to go um, to have a meeting with the friends or uh, to do a lot of things during the weekend. Or if you are a person that likes to stay home, to watch a movie or to watch a show, a TV series, uh, you like to, uh, I don't know, read a book or you prefer to stay in your house because um, in that time you can clean, you can do some uh, uh, things in your house or you don't like to go outside or to go out your uh, house in the weekend. So we have the question, did you do, good evening, did you do something or did you do anything? <clears throat> and in this case is, what did you do last weekend? That is the question. What did you do last weekend? Vamos a pensar en qué hicimos en nuestro fin de semana anterior. And I'm going to show you the question. What did you do? last weekend. In this case, you can think about uh, the activities that you perform like every weekend or if we did something special on this weekend, we could add that information too. 
uh, because in some cases we have like very repetitive actions that we perform during those days. Um, it's like a ritual that we perform that activities in that um, a specific moment on the week. So we're going to think about the things that we did the last weekend, but we are not going to give a lot of details. You can do it like general information. And also we are going to uh, answer the question if we like to stay home or if we prefer to go out on weekends. Vamos a pensar qué hicimos okay. en la semana anterior y también nos vamos a responder. Nos gusta salir en los fines de semana, nos gusta estar fuera de casa los fines de semana o si nos gusta estar dentro de casa. I'm going to give you five minutes. That is the time. Five minutes to think about the things that you did the last weekend and also if you prefer to go out or to stay in your house. Then you're going to give me your opinion. So five minutes and we are, let me see, what is the time right now? It's a six. So a 11, we are going to give our answers. Así que vamos a las ocho, once a dar nuestra respuesta. So let's think about the action or the activities that we perform.
for that question. So who wants to begin with the answers? Who wants to be the first? Okay, teacher. Okay, tell me. I'm gonna do. Okay. Well, uh, the last weekend on Saturday, uh, I went to the doctor. Yes. Yes. And and I did different kind of activities. Uh, during the night, I went to a restaurant and ate a uh, 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 good food. Ah, uh, good food. Yeah. And on on Sunday, I went to Guadalupe Lake. Mm -hmm. Yes, this kind of activities, teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay, who want who wants to be another a person that express or tell the activities that you performed on the weekend? I will give you time to think about the, the activities that you perform. So in this case, I'm going to give you like an example of uh, the things that I did on the weekend. So let's see. Um, okay, um, we can say I woke up kind of late on, on Saturday because I was really tired from the week, but it is not too late at least. Um, then I, I cooked the, the breakfast. Then I cleaned the whole house because on weekends I prefer to uh, do the cleaning. Tell me, Rodrigo. Uh, yes, teacher. The last weekend uh, in the morning, I stayed in my home. Uh, in the afternoon, I went to the mountain. In the night, I dinner in the restaurant. Oh, wow. Very good. Thank you. Someone else? The last weekend, I went to the cinema to see the wall. Okay, very good. Someone else? I like to go out t-shirt according to my wallet. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, I think, um, I don't know, but I can see that you um, go out on weekends because it's the time in which uh, we have that space to relax. And in some cases, um, people feel like they are resting in that way. I don't know why, but I think people feel good because they are doing the things that they like the most. Like uh, Rodrigo that said that he went to the mountain. It is like a very interesting activity. Um, I think my favorite place to go is the mountain too, but I don't have the possibility to do it uh, a lot. So it is something that I can do. Uh, we can say every month, um, but lately um, I went to the beach with my family because they really like the beach. I, it's kind of funny, but it is not my favorite activity because I prefer to stay home. I am one of the uh, people that prefer to stay home during the weekends or um, the free time. Uh, because I like to, to clean, 
I don't know why it is like a therapy for me, but I prefer to um, uh, watch the clothes and clean the whole house and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's like a sport, uh, we can say, because uh, I begin doing in the morning and I end all the things that I have to do in the night nonstop because I have like a, a very, um, it is not like in an order, but my schedule is kind of um, full of activities during the day. So in the weekends, I feel like empty if I am not doing anything. So I feel like I am sick in that uh, case. So in, I think it's, um, it's the energy of the week that I use for the activities in the weekend. It is kind of uh, weird because when I was a teenager, a couple of years ago, I uh, watch movies all day and I watch series all day and I was like happy doing that. But now that I am an adult, we can say that we are um, John adults or something like that. I don't like to watch movies because I think I am wasting my time and I don't know why, but I think it is like a phase in this case. But uh, I think I'm going to fix my, my schedules for the weekends. So in this case, we were like uh, talking about the things that we do, or in this case that we did during the weekends. So we are going to change the topic and we are going to talk about also about the past. Vamos a seguir hablando del pasado, but in this case, we are going to use the grammatical part. Vamos a ver la parte gramatical. Um, voy a hacer un uh, short review of the topic. I think you are very familiar with this topic that is the simple past. It's one of the basic topics that we learn when we are in this process um, that we are um, acquiring the language, in this case, the English language. But I'm going to do something kind of different uh, because we are going to talk about the questions in simple past. So uh, we are going to remember something about the simple past. But also, I'm going to show you different kind of questions. And in this case, we are going to see um, closed questions with the simple past, open questions, simple past questions related to movies and TV, um, simple past questions related to music, simple past questions related to friends, love, and family. Uh, we are going to see some questions related to, to uh, school times, last vacations, feelings. Uh, we are going to have like a, a short conversation, we can say, uh, related to party. Um, yes, we are going to have like uh, questions related to a party. Uh, one is related to school. And we are going to have like a different uh, categories. Vamos a verlas como categorías. Eh, vamos a utilizar información específica para cada una de estas categorías. ¿Cómo podemos hacer preguntas que se relacionen eh, con vacaciones? Preguntas para hacerle a las personas para conocer sobre películas, música, eh, sobre las amistades, el amor, la familia and all of that a kind of uh, information. But we are going to begin with basic information because we are going to have a short review. So it is important that we remember the information um, about the simple past. And in this case, we are going to uh, uh, focus on questions. So we are going to have here simple past question. And in this case, we're going to see the structure of the simple past questions. So in this case, you know that um, the simple past questions are frequently used 
and conversations, because in this case, the simple past is one of the most used tense of the 12. Tenemos 12 tiempos diferentes que se dividen en pasado, presente y futuro. Cada uno de ellos se puede dividir en cuatro. Eh, sabemos que son estructuras que utilizamos a veces sin saber eh, eh, si es una estructura en, en sí, sino que es algo natural. Pero en este caso, el simple past es uno de los más utilizados eh, de todos estos eh, tiempos que tenemos porque a veces hablamos de cosas que ya pasaron y conversamos con las personas y estamos utilizando ese, eh, esa estructura. Um, we use the simple past to talk about a definite time in the past. Obviamente hablamos de un tiempo específico en el pasado. So, in this case, we use the simple past to talk about a definite time in the past. What is the structure that we can use for this, um, for it, uh, we can say like uh, for this structure, for this tense, ¿Cuál es la estructura que necesitamos? So, in this case, we are going to use, uh, it is not um, the unique way to make questions, but in this case, I'm going to use the auxiliary. Tenemos también las WH words, pero voy a utilizar la estructura de el auxiliar did. So, the structure, we have here did, that is the auxiliary, plus the personal pronoun, plus the verb, plus the complement, plus the question mark that is very important to add in these kind of questions. So we have an example. It says, did you, Make a mistake. Did you make a mistake? In this case, we have this simple question. It is not like too complicated to create that kind of questions because we have the uh, auxiliary, then the pronoun, then a verb and a complement, and that's it. So remember that when we are using the auxiliaries in past or even in present, the auxiliary um, has the function of telling us what kind of a structure, what kind of sense we are using. So in this case that we are using the past, we are using the auxiliary in past. So we have did at the beginning of the questions. That's why I am not using any uh, particular change in the verb. Si ya utilizamos el auxiliar, el auxiliar me va a ayudar a mí a determinar qué tiempo gramatical estoy utilizando. En este caso, como el auxiliar está siendo usado en pasado, mi verbo ya no va a cambiar de forma. Ya queda de esa manera porque ya cumplí la función con el auxiliar. So, we are going to see the group of questions that we can uh, do. Tell me, Jonathan. Eh, en el caso de, de, de que el auxiliar no esté en pasado, podríamos poner el verbo en pasado. En este caso sería, do you made a mistake? O no se puede. No, en este caso, como el auxiliar siempre le va a ayudar a, a determinar qué tiempo está utilizando, ahí a, podemos decir que casi a la fuerza el auxiliar es el que tiene que ir en pasado. En el caso de que usted no utilice el auxiliar y utilice una WH word, eh, las preguntas, el what, when, where, ahí sí el verbo tende, tiene que ir en pasado. Pero en el caso del auxiliar no, porque él ya cumple esa función. Ok, gracias. You're welcome. Ok, we're going to see the first group of questions. No son 
a 50 preguntas por grupo, no son eh, muchas preguntas, solo vamos a ver ejemplos de preguntas que podemos hacer según esta eh, categoría. Vamos a empezar con las close questions with the simple past. So, the first group that we have here is the close questions. Preguntas cerradas. And we have, in English, the two kind of uh, questions, like in Spanish, the closed question and the open question. But in this case, we're going to begin with the closed questions. Estas son las que no requieren de mucha explicación. Sí, no, y hasta ahí. So, the first question is, did you do any exercises? We can say, ¿hiciste algunos ejercicios? Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Um, kind of, pero son respuestas cortas. Very short answers. Yes, no, maybe. Mm, uh, we can add some words to these questions. Did you play video games last night? Did you play video games? Last night, yes, I did, or no, I didn't, I was studying. We can add a little bit of information in some cases, but it is not necessary. Did she have good arguments? Did she have good arguments? So if you can see in this case, the closed questions are the ones that use the auxiliary. En este caso, como es el auxiliar el que estamos utilizando, eh, son preguntas cerradas. Entonces, cuando utilicemos nosotros el auxiliar, va a ser una pregunta cerrada. Lo mismo sucede con el verbo to be. When we create eh, questions with the verb to be, eh, we have the closed questions. Are you sleeping? Are you hungry? Are you buying something? Cuando hacemos preguntas con el verbo to be, también son eh, preguntas cerradas. But when we are um, going to make open questions, we are going to use the WH words. En el caso de las preguntas con, eh, que se hacen con las WH, eh, las palabras con WH, son las open questions. So, I'm going to write five of these um, statements. Tell me, teacher. Tell me. In the last answer, uh, for example, you brought this, did she have good arguments? Uh -huh. if, my, if my answer is negative, could you help me with the answer? Uh, if you are going to say something negative, you can say no, uh, I mean, no. <laughs> I, I think, did she have good arguments? No, she didn't. Usted va a decirlo, no, she Didn't, didn't, o puede decirlo de una sola vez, did not. Ahí usted escoge cuál es el mejor, did not. En ese caso sería la uh, forma negativa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was so confused according to the use the, the verb uh, was or were. Ah, ajá. So pero I'm, I'm trying to, under, to understand when I have to use. Was and uh, where. Was, was and where, yeah. And, it and is part case, of the grammar. Uh -huh. And in this case, uh, you are not going to use the was and where because you are not having the was and where in the question. That is something very important that we can uh, remember. Cuando hacemos las preguntas, depende de la palabra que estemos utilizando para hacer la pregunta, así va a ser nuestra respuesta. En este caso, como tenemos el did, voy a terminar esta para eh, responder esta pregunta. Luego le voy a poner una con el was y el were y una con el verbo to be. Aquí, aquí tenemos, did she buy more Pokemon, Pokemon cards? Tenemos la pregunta, ¿ella compró más tarjetas de Pokémon? Vamos a contestarla de dos formas. Yes, positivo, she did. Ella lo hizo. Ella las compró, es la interpretación. O no, she didn't. No, ella no lo hizo, no las compró. 
Ahora, en el caso del was and el where, was my sister in the party? Estuvo mi hermana en la fiesta y aquí, I mean on the party or at the party, that's the, the use of the word. Um, we can say in the answer, en la respuesta vamos a poner nosotros, no, si es negativa, she wasn't. O, yes, she was. Y con el verbo to be. Are you my teacher? Respondemos de las dos formas. Yes, porque como aquí se le pregunta a ustedes, ustedes responden con el yo. Yes, I am. O, no, I'm not. Ahora. ¿Cuál es la clave de nuestra respuesta? Primero, ¿qué palabra estamos utilizando para nuestra pregunta? En este caso, como estamos utilizando eh, el auxiliar, aquí nosotros vamos a responder siempre con el auxiliar. Ahora, en este, estamos utilizando el verbo to be en pasado para iniciar nuestra pregunta. Quiere decir que nuestra respuesta va a llevar el verbo to be en pasado, dependiendo de quién es el sujeto que realiza esa acción. En este caso, como tenemos a la tercera persona, respondemos con el she was or she wasn't. Si fuera en el caso de you, you weren't or you were, o en el caso de they. Y cuando tenemos el verbo to be al iniciar la pregunta, si es is, it, um, Um, en el caso de am um, es not like, eh, no, no tan se seguido que hacemos esas preguntas porque es estarnos preguntando a nosotros mismos. Pero más que todo el are y el is. Entonces nuestras respuestas automáticamente vamos a ver nosotros para quién va dirigida la pregunta. Como en el caso de la última que tenemos ahí. Are you my teacher? Es como que yo les pregunte a ustedes, are you my teacher? Ustedes no me van a decir, no, you are not porque no les estoy preguntando si soy yo, sino si son ustedes. Entonces, ahí cambiamos a yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Pero es el inicio de nuestra pregunta. O sea, esa palabra. Ya en el caso de las WH words, cuando ya llevamos las preguntas eh, con las palabras WH, ahí sí, ahí nosotros podemos agregar toda la información y no hay como eh, una restricción. No es que yo solo voy a contestar con el verbo, con el auxiliar. No, ahí sí ya nosotros podemos ir eh, agregando la información que queramos. So, it's now okay. kind of clear. Yes or no? Uh, yes. To be honest with you, I, I was, I was working. Yes. To be honest with you, I was working in the, in the platform during the day. Uh -huh. I, I only had two two mistakes, maybe. Ah, okay. Maybe, maybe at the end of the class you will help. And yes. Or work in the platform, maybe. I'm going to work on the platform. Vamos a trabajar en la plataforma. Uh, I think A40 or A40. I like uh, the different pronunciation of the numbers. Uh, I think we are going to have six minutes more talking about the questions. And then we are going to go to the platform. Vamos a revisar los knowledge check que nos quedan de la sección 2 para irlos revisando y para que vayan viendo los que tienen problemas con alguno de los ejercicios. Así que sí, vamos a pasar a la plataforma dentro de poco. Okay, teacher. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, we are going to see the other one. That is the open questions. Uh, in this case, you know, that is um, the use of the WH words. Aquí simplemente utilizamos las palabras WH eh, que tenemos para hacer las preguntas. How can I know when I have to use short answers and long answers? Um, this is depending on the way you want to tell the things. Aquí básicamente es como nosotros queramos hablar. Eh, las, horas, las preguntas cerradas, 
no es que todo el tiempo usted solo va a decir sí, no y ya hasta ahí, sino que depende de cómo usted quiera contestarla. Si usted dice sí, no, that's okay, porque esa es la base de la pregunta. Pero si en esa misma close questions ustedes quieren agregar un poco más de información, tampoco es que se van a extender tanto, pero sí pueden agregar un poco más de información. Pueden decir, yes, I did because I feel good with myself. O, yes, I did my homework because it was easy. Ah, una respuesta sencilla. And in the case of the eh, open questions, sí son preguntas abiertas, pero también podemos ser un poco breves a la hora de contestar. Aquí es como ustedes se sientan a gusto, si ustedes quieren agregar más información, you can do it. It is not a problem. And there is no rule that said that you cannot do that thing. But um, si nos basamos en la gramática o si nos basamos en los nombres de las preguntas, preguntas que vayan con auxiliar, preguntas que vayan con verbo to be, preguntas que vayan con was y where, usted va a hacer respuestas cortas. Si son preguntas que lleven what, when, why, how, y todas esas uh, WH words, usted puede extenderse un poco más con su respuesta. So, in this case, we said that we use the WH words. For example, what exercise did you do? Veamos la diferencia de la primera pregunta que teníamos con el did. Did you do any exercise? ¿Hiciste algún ejercicio? Nosotros podemos decir, sí, hice algunos ejercicios, pero no me está preguntando específicamente cuáles. En cambio, en la pregunta de la open question, what exercises did you do? ¿Qué ejercicios hiciste? Aquí yo puedo empezar a explicarle cuáles fueron los ejercicios que yo realicé. Then, who did you meet there? Who, meet, who did you meet? There. ¿A quiénes conociste o a quién conociste? And you can mention uh, different kind of people. How many toys did you buy? How many toys did you buy? ¿Cuántos juguetes compraste? Uh, I buy, I think, 10 different toys. And you can list the toys that you... Eh, bye. Um, um, what more? In this case, we're not going to use a lot of uh, questions because uh, we are going to do it like short. Vamos a hacerlo bastante cortos. <coughs> Then we have simple past questions related to movies and TV. And we are going to end with this one because we are going to pass to the, the platform. So, In this uh, kind of question, simple past question. And we have movies and TV. I'm going to write just two different uh, questions. Did you watch any movie? This is a closed question. Did you watch any movies? ¿Viste alguna película? Sí. No, no tuve tiempo. That's it. What did you watch yesterday? What did you watch yesterday? Oh, yesterday I watched uh, I watched a movie um, that is about I don't know fruits and vegetables that are sick and they need some kind of medicines to be good and it was kind of weird and we can explain all the things that we can say about the movies so i'm going to add more information to the document about the questions i will uh, write all the questions here les voy a poner las listas de las preguntas acá para que ustedes vayan viendo los ejemplos que tenemos Vamos a irnos a la plataforma. Vamos a trabajar these 20 last minutes 
on the exercises of the platform to see what are the different kind of troubles that we can uh, see on the knowledge check. So we are going to perform one, two, three, and four. We are going to do four different exercises. Vamos a hacer cuatro ejercicios diferentes. So let's begin with the number one. <clears throat> So in this one, complete this conversation. Questions and answers must be in simple past. Eso tiene que estar en pasado simple. So, um, the first one. Si ya sabemos que están en pasado, ¿cuáles serían las palabras que vamos a utilizar para la primera pregunta? The third one. The third one, okay, did and stay. Okay, number three, very good. Um, number two, no, I, my friend, we to a cafe for lunch. Number two. Okay, someone said number two and Jonathan said number three. Number no. three. I... Think about, think about, think about. Number three. Someone said number three. Another one said number two. No, I. Number one. Number one, okay. Someone said number one. Number hmm. one. Another number, number one. Number oh. three. Number Num one. Number one. Number, number one. Number, number three. Number three, number one. Okay, we are going to go with the number one. Vamos a ir con el número uno porque hubieron eh, más personas que dijeron número uno. Vamos a ir probando. Number three, how you, your last birthday. How you spend. What is the, the past of spend? Gastar. Uh huh. But in this case, we're going to use the auxiliary or not. And that is the thing. Si tenemos number el auxiliar, ya saben que es lo que va. Hmm? Third, the third teacher. The number three. Three. Vamos a ver, ¿alguien más? Three. Número uno, number dos, three. número tres. Muy three. bien. Ok. Número tres. Ok. Vamos a ver. Número cuatro. I have, el pasado de have. Luego, everyone enjoy it. También tenemos que buscar el pasado de enjoy. But the neighbors not like the noise. Aquí va en eh, pasado negativo. Number two. Number one, say someone else. One, two. Mm. Number two. Number two. two. Number two. Number two. Number two. Okay. Let's see. What do you last night? In español, ¿qué hiciste esa noche? Number, Number one. one. Okay. Number one. Okay, number one again. Number one. Okay, number one. Vamos con el número seis. I to the new Jim Carrey film. I love it. Number three. Number three. 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 Okay, number three. three. Okay. Vamos con la siete. You anything special over the weekend? Es una pregunta. Tiene que comenzar con un auxiliar. Number two. Number two, two. ok. Number eight. Es una respuesta okay. a la... Number one. Number one. Someone said number one. Number one. Number one. Yeah. Ok, number one. Number nine and ten. Tenemos nueve y diez. Otra pregunta. 
Number two. Number two. Y la última, una respuesta. No hay. Number one. Didn't. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Didn't. Ok, vamos a ver. We are waiting, we are waiting for the results. And they are not coming. Oh, wow. Ajá. Uh -huh. So, all of them are correct. Todas ellas están correctas. Así que recapitulamos. Number one, did stay. Number two, didn't call and drove. Number three, did and spend. Number four, had enjoyed, didn't like the noise. Number five, did and do. Number six, went and loved. Number seven, did and do. Number eight, did, went, spent. Number nine, did and sing. And number 10, didn't. Um, in which one? En cual, en cual encontró el verbo en pasado? En cual de los, de las, um, de los números? Four. Number four. Let's see the number four. Vamos a ver, number four. Number, number six. Vamos a ver, eh, vamos a ver el número cuatro. En este caso, aquí no estamos utilizando, en el número cuatro no estamos utilizando ningún auxiliar y no estamos utilizando pregunta. Entonces, estamos haciendo una oración en pasado simple. Tenemos nuestros verbos y obviamente todos nuestros verbos van a ir en pasado. I had a party. Yo tuve una fiesta. Everyone enjoyed the, the party. Eh, las personas lo disfrutaron. But the neighbors didn't. Aquí sí ya lleva el auxiliar. En la última parte porque ella es negativa. Didn't like. Did not like. Como ya el, el auxiliar va en pasado negativo, el like va igual. Number six, say someone else. Número seis, I went. Igual, no estamos utilizando el auxiliar. Y no es pregunta. I went to the new Jim Carrey film. Fui a la nueva película de Jim Carrey. I love it. La amé. En ese caso, cuando no estamos utilizando el auxiliar, tell me. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yes. Um, that one. Ah, la número seis. Ok. En ese number caso, eh, number eight, uh, we are going to say the no, number eight. En este caso, como no son preguntas y tampoco llevamos el auxiliar, porque básicamente son... Eh, um, Oraciones en, en pasado simple, pues ahí sí el verbo tiene que ir automáticamente en pasado. Number eight. Aquí sí es una respuesta. Yes, I did. Como respuesta es una sola frase. Yes, I did. Luego, I, ya no estoy utilizando el auxiliar. I went shopping. Fui de compras. Unfortunately, I spent. Me gasté todo mi dinero. Ya usé el auxiliar, pero para respuesta. Lo demás ya no es pregunta. Entonces, mi verbo sí automáticamente va en pasado. Porque son oraciones simples en pasado. Ya no llevo el auxiliar. Si son preguntas, automáticamente al escribir el did al inicio de la pregunta, mi verbo ya no va en pasado. Solo cuando usamos las WH words. So, we are going to see the next one. Eh, the number six. El número seis. Yes. Uh, let me see. Number six, number six, number six. I went to the new Jim Carrey film. I love it. I love it. Eh, no se marca tanto lo del sonido de la D. I love 
love, el, la D queda ahí, love it, love it, I love it. Okay, we are going to see the next one. This is an audio. Ese es un audio. Y tenemos cuatro cosas. Dice que vamos a escuchar. Eh, listen to John and Laura describe what they did last night. Check the correct information about each person. Vamos a ver qué hicieron ellos en la noche anterior. But I like to share the audio like this because it's better. So we are going to listen. Listening. What did you do last night? Part A. Listen to John and Laura describe what they did last night. Check the correct information about each person. So, what did you do last night, John? Uh, I went to my boss's house for dinner. Really? How was it? Oh, the food was okay, but the people weren't very interesting. They talked about football all night, and I hate football. Then we watched some boring sports videos. I didn't get home until after midnight. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. I had a great time last night. I went to a party and met an old school friend of mine. We haven't seen each other for years, so we had lots to talk about. We stayed at the party all night. Hmm, it sounds like you had a much better time than I did. Yeah. I guess you're right. Okay, we have two different ideas about the night. Vamos a ver. Who had a boring time? ¿Quién tuvo un tiempo malo y aburrido? Laura, John o ambos? John. 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 Okay. Who had a good time? ¿Quién tuvo un buen momento? Laura. Laura. Very good. Then, who met an old friend? ¿Quién conoció un amigo de hace tiempos? Laura. Laura. Okay. And the last one. Who got home late? ¿Quién llegó tarde a casa? Both. 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 John. John? Both re return late. Both. Both. Okay, let's see. Very good. Los dos llegaron tarde a casa. Ahí están nuestras respuestas. Very good, very good. This is kind of short, so. We're going to see the last, ah, uh, we have two more. This one. We're going to complete the following conversations and we are going to use the past of B. Aquí vamos a utilizar el pasado de B. Was and where. Ya sabemos que en este caso, eh, en, en quienes se aplica el where, es son los plurales más que todo. And you and the others use was. I was, he was, she was, it was. You were, they were, we were. And that's it. It says, how long your parents in Europe? Estamos utilizando eh, plurales. Was or where? Where. 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 Okay. Where. They there for two weeks. They were. They were. were. Where. Okay. They in London the whole time. Where. 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 Okay. Where. No, they. Negativo. Where. 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 Not. Where. Not. Where. Where. Not. Where. Where. Not. Where. Where. Not. Where. Not. Or weren't. Cualquiera de los dos creo que lo aceptaría como correcto. Um, you in Los Angeles. In, my, hmm? in the number 42 yeah. in the platform, uh, this is one mistake that I had because okay. I don't know mm -hmm. why I don't recognize this answer. Mm, le puso weren't o le puso both. were not? Both. 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 Okay. But, but once again. Uh, okay. Vamos a. Not, vamos not, a... Not, not both at the same time. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> Vamos a intentar con weren't y si lo acepta okay. como bueno es porque tal vez hay problema con el apóstrofe. Number five, you in Los Angeles. What? Where? 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 Okay, no I. Negativo otra was. vez. Was not or wasn't. Wasn't. 
Okay. Wasn't. wasn't. How it? Estamos utilizando it. How was it? Was. Uh, very good. And? It was. It was. It was great. Very good. Number nine. You away last week. Where you? Where? Were you? Very good. Yes, I was. was was in Istanbul. Okay, let's see. Let's see. So, in this case, es el apóstrofe. Okay. I'm, I'm going to send this one. Vamos a probar con esto. Lo voy a mandar al chat. Si lo puede copiar. Y ponerlo porque a veces el, el, los tipos de apóstrofe que tenemos, eh, un poquito se mueve para un lado y ya no lo acepta. Eh, ok, eh, I think if you didn't work on the platform, you have time to Monday, I think. Yo creo que hasta el lunes tiene tiempo para ponerse al día, pero es en el caso de los que van atrasados, ¿verdad? Eh, los demás que ya están trabajando en la plataforma, pues sigan así y no se retrasen mucho porque eh, luego venimos a ver el tiempo y ya se nos está acabando. Pero en el caso de los que en realidad no han podido hacerlo por cuestiones de tiempo, cuestiones laborales, creería yo que tienen hasta el día lunes. Así que si tiene un poco de tiempo, usted puede ir revisando igual eh, los videos eh, y ahí estamos haciendo nosotros los ejercicios de la plataforma para que también se vaya apoyando con eso. And we are going to do the last one. Vamos a hacer el último para cerrar con la, la, la sección número dos. Another listening part. Okay. So we are going to listen to Jason and Barbara talk about their vacation. Uh, we are going to write the answers for each person and we are going to uh, type in full answers. Do not forget to type a period. Aquí sí es bien específico. Vamos a escribir la respuesta para cada persona, respuestas completas y tenemos que poner el punto al final. So let's listen this audio. Listening. Welcome back. Listen to Jason and Barbara talk about their vacations. Complete the chart. Jason, hi, welcome back. You were away last week, right? Yeah, I was on vacation. Where did you go? I went to San Francisco. Nice. How was it? Oh, I loved it. What did you like most about it? Well, San Francisco is such a beautiful place, and the weather was actually pretty nice. Well, that sounds more exciting than my last vacation. What did you do, Barbara? I just stayed home. I don't have enough money to take a trip anywhere. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, not really. I actually enjoyed my vacation. I went to the gym every day, and I lost three pounds. Well, that's great. Good for you. Okay, that's the end. Let's see. Uh, but first, uh, we have a list on YouTube uh, about the course. Hay siempre una lista de videos en YouTube donde se están subiendo todos los videos. O sea, se termina la sesión, se sube el video y um, al final están todos los videos de las sesiones. En el documento que les voy a mandar al grupo de WhatsApp, porque hoy les voy a mandar el documento, les voy a agregar al principio del documento el enlace de la lista de reproducción de YouTube para que puedan ir a ver los videos anteriores, para que vayan trabajando también con las respuestas. So, where did Jason go? ¿A dónde fue Jason? San Francisco. San Francisco. He, he, went, went, to, he went to San Francisco. Exactly. He went to San Francisco. San Francisco. Remember to write the complete answers. Did he enjoy the point at the end? Ajá, uh -huh. y poner el punto al final. Did he enjoy it? Lo disfrutó? Yes, he yes. did. Yes, he did. Okay, he did. Period. Where did Barbara go? She stayed at home. She stayed at home. 
She stayed at home, okay? And did she enjoy it? Lo disfrutó? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Okay, yes, she did. Let's see. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. We have a problem. I have, I have the same mistake, teacher. Okay. What do you think is the problem here? ¿Cuál creen ustedes que sería el problema? Porque los de los nombres de ellos son los que nos salieron mal. What do you think? Only write San Francisco. Only write San Francisco. Vamos a probar solo con el yeah. lugar. Ok, vamos a probar. Mm -hmm. San Francisco and that's it. En el caso de Bárbara, entonces solo le ponemos stayed at home, stayed at I home. think. I think, I think. Ok, vamos a intentarlo. Nope. Eh, sin el punto. No, in this case we need to write at the period. En, en la descripción decía que sí tenemos que poner el punto. No creo que ese sea el problema. Mm. Yo los tengo todos buenos. Y yo solo puse San Francisco y en el número 3 solo home. Sin puntos ni nada. Ok, Igual vamos yo. Vamos a intentarlo entonces. Ellos dicen que no le pusieron punto. Let's see. Vamos a ver si es cierto. We don't know. Oh, San Francisco is correct, but stay at home, no. Entonces solo le pongo no. home. It's just, it's just home. Ah, ok. Home. Hmm? Let's see. Oh, Look at this. The platform was crazy. This <laughs> the platform was saying that we need to write the period, but it is not true. O sea que la plataforma no se está jugando una broma. Okay, this is the answer. This is the correct answer for this uh, exercise. So we are going to end the session. If you have the um, you can screenshot your answers or something like that to complete the exercise. But it is kind of short. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other on Monday because we are going to begin Thank the next teacher. week. So have a really good weekend and you see you on Monday. See you Monday. Good you. Have you. Have a good weekend. Monday. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, good night classmates. Good night, teacher. Good night. <laughs>